Hi guys, Nigel here with you again, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and it's review time once again. And if you remember, a while back I did a massive review of a load of sets that Red Fox Studio, these guys here, from um, Hungary sent me. And uh, one of those sets was this one here. This was the Panavia Tornado GR1 or IDS, and it's for the Revell kit. Well, as some of you will know, I don't have the Revell kit, but I have recently bought the Itinerary kit because I fell in love with the display up at Milton Keynes. I did a review of the kit and um, Andy Richards, who's one of my keen followers, we message each other a lot, he uh, said to me that, did I know that Hannance was soon going to be stocking the Red Fox instrument panel for the GR4? So I got onto um, Attila up at Red Fox and said, when is it going to be available? He said, it's available now. I will send it to you today. And here it is. So lucky me, I got this sent to me by Attila for free for my model. So um, in return, I'm going to do a product review of it. And in the next couple of days, I'm not sure the next couple of days, maybe in the next week, um, I will fit it. So it'll be the first one of these sets. I've, I've reviewed loads of these sets. It'll be the first one I've actually fitted. So... Again, it's a beautiful looking set. The part number is RFSQS32031. And as I said, as Andy informed me, I've had a look and um, Hannants are expecting to be stocking these very soon. So for us in the UK, that's very handy. Um, for the rest of the world and Europe, I guess you go to Red Fox Studio Direct. Uh, I'm not sure about price differences and stuff. Um, I do know that Hannants tend to be, everything is resale price. You won't find any discounts or anything on, on their stuff uh, unless you go to their discounted or second hand or damaged or whatever but um, generally you know if you want to know the maximum retail price of a kit um, if you go to Hannant's that will be it you know if if the if the Tamiya Mosquito retails at 239.99 and everyone else is doing it at 199.99 you can guarantee Hannant's will have it up for 239.99 so um, there you go um, so this is the, the uh, 3D acrylic instrument panel set for the Itinerary Panavia Tornado GR4 and it doesn't say slash ECR so I can only assume the ECR has a difference although the kit doesn't have different panels for the different variants as far as I'm aware. I didn't notice any difference in the sprues so I'd imagine this is going to be the same for the ECR as well. So as you can see lovely little bubble, um, lovely little um, plastic pack with card stiffeners inside You've got a lovely image on the front there of what you're actually getting in the set. So, like, it's not only instrument panels like some other sets out there. You're getting all your side consoles as well. And all the switch gear and everything that's there is all 3D printed and coloured. So it's all raised. So it's better than using Photo Etch. Photo Etch is very sort of flat. doesn't have much feature to it. This, if you've seen these sets before, you'll know exactly what I mean. So we can see here, there's the set. And we can see the difference now in this set from... This is the GR1 ODS on the bottom and we've got the GR4 on the top and straight away you'll notice the different colour and one thing I have noticed, I've been looking at a couple of builds online and I have noticed that people do tend to do the cockpits perhaps a little too dark. Um, I think the British cockpits, they're not like the Americans, they're not XF54, they're more sort of XF19 um, in colour. So. Whether somebody told them that this was maybe a little too dark or whatever, so you can see these bits here, whatever they are, they're sort of really accentuated here in orange and red. And if you look up here, they're sort of a lot more subtle. Um, so not quite sure what's going on there, but um, certainly that one appears to be slightly lighter than that one. Although saying that, the colours are lovely. Um, there are some other sets out there, as we know, the colours tend to... Be a bit of a mishmash. Um, these clippers are used for removing staples. I'm not actually cutting with them. I'm just actually bending the staple back and then I go in from behind and pull the staple out. Okay. Um, I get a lot of concern about using Tamiya cutters for removing staples. These are my older ones. These are my current new ones. So they have got four here and they go down. In fact, I should be using those because these are number two. I have numbers three and number four. This is number four, as you can see. It's got a Come on, focus. I've got a great big chip in it there. So there we are. Um, so yeah, I don't use I don't use these for. Well, I just did, didn't I? That's what we're talking about. Shut up, Nigel. So anyway, uh, in the packet, as usual, what we've got here is 
the parts themselves in a little uh, Ziploc bag. And then we've got the actual card stuff. I, I must ask you the next time I speak to him. How on earth do you package these things? Because they're so bloody tight. They must have somebody there manually putting them in, I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's not a machine, because they do so many different sets. So basically, as per normal, we've got the bag of parts, we've got some card there, and we've got the outer layer card here. And this outer layer card is going to form our instructions. So basically, what we've got here, this is a display of the sheet, okay, for the forward cockpit. And the navigator, I think it's called navigator in GR4, isn't it? Um, tell me if I'm wrong. So basically, you can see there's your parts all laid out. And they refer to the parts as they are on this sheet. Okay? So you can see they're all there. This white is making the camera go mental. But you can see there's all the parts on there. And there's your parts on there. So that's how you identify them. They're very, very lightly stuck onto here. Once you take them off, they won't sort of go back on. So um, you need to be a little bit careful. Uh, make sure you only take one off at a time. Make sure you know which one you want. Um, they can be slightly bent, but they are quite brittle. But you can put any washes or anything over them. We'll go back to that in a minute. So that's your sort of sprue call out, if you like, um, there. So that's for that one. And then here we've basically got the card front. And then this is what we're going to do. Original kit parts, tells you the numbers there. The blue parts are not smooth, please sand them first. So what it's telling you to do is remove all the raised detail. You've got to be a little bit careful because you can see that around here, around the throttle quadrant and stuff, you're not going to remove all of that detail. And on here, you're not going to remove that detail back in there on that instrument panel. So, and the same here, that you're only removing the top half of it, not the bottom. So you've got to be very careful. And it's nice that this is so clear and concise it looks like it's photographs of the actual parts rather than having a sort of remove here and then you realize oh bollocks i took it off the wrong place or whatever so this is really nice that they do it like this um it says here the parts will be glued together with pva or cyan acrylate the upgrade parts can also be washed with enamel or acrylic paint usable varnish types are ester white spirit nitro lacquer and acrylic based Durable UV resistance service, maximum bend bendability surface, not service, maximum bendability tolerance five degrees. There we go. So you don't want to be flexing them around too much. So make sure the areas are nice and flat. And you can guess what I'll be sanding those with. Yeah, these things. These are my new favourite tool. So glass files. So we get them nice and flat with those, and then we can glue these on. As I say, I'll do a video on fitting all this. Um, but it's going to be one of those videos that's going to be like, these are the parts, here are the plastic parts. Then I'm going to have to spend hours cleaning them all up and then paint it and everything. And it's going to be a sort of a half hour video that's going to take about a week to make. So, um, and it's showing us there where all the parts go. So as I say, we've got like our, our sprue call out there, if you like, with all your different panels on it. And then this is showing you where all those parts go. So I would recommend using PVA on there so you can move them around. Um, and then if you just want to be sure, just a dab of super, super glue in the edge, just to sort of just knock the edge into, you know, lock the edge into place. And there you go. And then you've got the same here for the actual side consoles. And then you've got this bit going around here, wherever that may be. I'm not sure. I think that's part of the display, isn't it, for the, uh, for the rear guy. And then, um, and that's it. That's basically it. And then once you've got all that done, you just go back to the kit instructions because you've got all the pits. Pits? The bits, you're not doing any pre-assembly, you've got all the bits here in front of you with all these parts on, just as the plastic parts are. Now, I have noticed in other people's builds, the plastic parts do look very, very nicely moulded indeed. So if you're one of those that wants to paint your own, you're laughing, you know, compared to some kits these days, the instrument panel is very nice. I don't know about its accuracy or whatever, or size, but I have noticed in one person was doing a video, I can't remember your name now, sorry, but they did pick up a moulding floor. It looks like it's got the same here. And down in this area here, where you've got these defined panels, like on here, on the actual kit, this all just runs out. It's just like it's been sanded off already. So um, I'm not sure if all the kit's the same. It looks like it's the same there. I'll have a look at mine when I get it out. The kit, that is. So there we go. That is the Panavia Tornado GR4 set, 32031, recommended for the Italeri kit. I'm going to be using this. I'm going to be doing a video on it, as I say, and what you're going to get now is some lovely photographs where I get all the different angles. And I did get one comment about my photography. Now, 
I'm not the best photographer in the world, but when I take these pictures, I may have the camera sort of pointing on angle at this part here. Okay, and the reason I can make it a bit closer, I may have the cam camera pointing on angle at that part there. So all of this down here and all of that down there will appear blurred. Focus on the middle of the picture, please, um, because that's what I'm focusing on. And the thing is, it's got this in super macro. I'm so close that everything else appears blurred. So just notice that looks like a little face on there, doesn't it? It's like a little angry Terminator. What? <laughs> I come to get you. <laughs> You see his mouth and his nose and his eyes? Yeah. Right, so anyway. let's get this out and have a quick look at it. And then, as I say, we'll get some pictures done for you. So let's just get this out of here. You've got to be very careful taking these out because, as I say, they're not glued on particularly hard. Particularly well, should I say. That's not a criticism, it's just that's the way that it is. And they will come off quite easily. There we go. Pull it out slowly because you don't want to go lose in the position. You see that one there is loose, that one's just floating around. So, um, yeah, that's just float, it's barely stuck on there at all. Let me give it a little squeeze, see if it'll stay there. No, I'm not quite sure how they're held down. Yeah, it's, it's all loose, it's all going to fall apart. But I can show you just up close here so you get an idea of what these things are like. Absolutely stunning. If you've seen these reviews before, you can see the faces are all gloss. Okay, it's all powered down, which is nice. Not having all the bloody radar showing like it's all lit up like a Christmas tree when it's just parked on the ground when it's flaps down. And then you can see it's all 3D. You've got all the gauges there with all the shiny bits on. You've got all the switches. I'm going to put my finger over there so they don't fall off. I'm not sure if you're going to catch it here, but you can see those switches are all raised away from the surface. If you look across the sheet, you can see it's all raised and it's all it's all actual lifelike full size switches rather than just a flat sort of 3D, uh, not 3, a flat 2D printed PA sheet. You know, it's it's um very very nice. So I'm going to leave that out there now. I'll get you some photographs and I'll put them up now with a little bit of music. So thanks for watching. See you in a few days for the build, or this build of this, and I'll uh, see you then. Bye for now.